you've likely stumbled upon this video because you're looking to learn Bootstrap 5's columns. Now you've come to the right place. Today I'm going to be talking all about Bootstrap 5's columns and the different variations and how we can use them. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Jay from Coding with Jaybird and here on my channel we learn about web development and current tech. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. All right, let's get started. I've created a demo for you all today that's going to talk about the horizontal and vertical alignment of bootstrap columns. Now, in order to better understand bootstrap columns and how we can change the alignment or reorder columns, it's a good idea that you watch my previous video. Uh, you'll see the link to it on the top right hand corner, it should pop up anytime now. In my last video, I talked about how Bootstrap 5 uses Flexbox to style its grids. Now, the same thing applies for columns. Columns are built on the grids Flexbox architecture. All right, so this allows us to change the columns at the row level. So we can change how they grow or they shrink. We can change how we order them and how we display them on the web page. So today I'll show you a little bit about vertically and horizontally aligning these columns, and then we'll get into reordering them as well. Everything should be wrapped in a container, and then a container should have a row, and then within the row, you should have columns, and within the columns, you should have the content. So it's really important to have that structure. So we start with a container, with a row inside, followed by columns, followed by the content. Okay, and now that's the basic structure of how our code should look. So when we're building with our grid layouts, we need to understand that content should always go within the columns. We shouldn't accidentally put the content loosely in the container or in the row. Now I'm going to put a div with a class of container, and then following that, I'll put a div with a class of row. I'll have one div nested within another, and then another one inside of that as well. So the first one will be a class of container, followed by a class of row, followed by a class of call. Now inside each one, I'm just gonna call it call one, call two, call three. So let's duplicate this a few times. Now, if we look at the CSS that I've created, I've styled the box, row, and call classes. So when I save it, you'll see the styling that I've applied. Okay, so we see our three columns. Now I also wanna text center this. So the first thing that I wanna demonstrate is how do we vertically align these columns? Right now, they're all sitting in this container, which is sitting in this class of box. So if I want these columns to move up, all I have to do is target the row, which is this div right here with a class of row, and I need to apply an align item start to it. So align items start class, and you'll see that these columns have now moved to the top of this box. Now I've given this row a minimum height, so you can see that in the CSS, this minimum height is applied. Now, what if I wanted to change it from start to let's say end? So I wanted to move this to the bottom. Well, all I have to do is change this word start to end and that's it. And now the columns move to the end. Similarly, I can also move them to the center or the middle of this box by typing center. And now they move to the center. So vertical alignment is really easy. That's a quick way to style your columns. Something else we can do is we can actually target each individual column separately. So I'm going to actually copy this whole section. Now this time we want to remove this align item center from the row class. And what we want to do is we want to target each column individually. So within the classes of each column, all I have to type is something like align self start. And it's going to take that first column and push it up. Similarly, I can also apply align self and let's say to the second one, and it's gonna push it down. And now to the last one, I could do a, a line, let's say self center, and it's gonna move it to the middle. I can have more than one end if I want. So I can take this first start and I can move it to the end. And now the two boxes are at the bottom. So you can have a lot of fun with this. Now that's a little bit about vertical alignment. How about horizontal alignment? So I'm gonna make another box so let's just copy this first one that we have. Now I'll delete this third column and let's also get rid of this align items center. Now it's easier to demonstrate this if I actually give each one of these columns a fixed width. So I'm gonna say that the first and second column take up three out of the 12 columns in the grid. 
Okay, so together these two should span halfway across the page and you can see that here. Now, for some reason, my styling is not applied. Oh, that's because I don't have the call class applied. So maybe I should also fix that. Let's go in our styles.css and I'm also going to add call, oops, dot call dash three and that should fix that. Now what I can do is I can take this entire row and I can push the content in this row to the middle. So I can say justify content center. And now it took the columns and it centered them. Now I can also move them to the start if I wanted. So I can say justify content start. And now it'll move them to the beginning. Similarly, I can say justify content end and I'll move them over to the right. Well, let's actually make another copy of this. And then I'll get rid of this justify content end and replace it with justify content between. And now we'll see it took our two columns and pushed them as far apart as possible. We can also change this to evenly and that'll evenly distribute the space between all the columns in the back and the two columns that we've created. We can also say justify content around. And this one's a bit different. It justifies the content evenly around each column. So that's a little bit about horizontal and vertical alignment. I also want to talk about reordering columns because sometimes your HTML looks a certain way and you want it to look that way on, let's say, a mobile screen. But then when you move up to like a medium sized screen or let's say even a full size desktop screen, at that point, you may want to reorder or rearrange the way things look on the web page. Now, to better understand ordering columns, let's make a copy of this first div again. And I'll use that for this last demonstration. So now we can also get rid of this align item center because we don't need that anymore. And now what I can do is let's say I can change the order. So I can take the second column and I can say, okay, give this an order of maybe four. And then I can take this last column and say, maybe let's give this an order of uh, one. It took the highest order column. So this order of five and moved it to the end. And the one that I gave an order of one, it moved it here into the middle. Now I didn't touch the first column and that's because I didn't give the first column any order. So it just left it alone. Now I could change it. So if I have said an order of let's say two, it's going to now move it to the second position. As you can see, if it doesn't have a class of order dash some number, it's not going to do anything to it. Usually when you want to reorder columns, you're going to want to do that to all of your columns. So typically you probably would do an order dash and some number value from one to six on each of your columns. Now that's if you know how you want to organize your columns and you're very specific about each column. But what if you just wanted one or two columns to be moved to the first or last position? Well, that can be done as well. So again, let's just make a duplicate of this. And I'm going to get rid of these order classes. We don't need those anymore. And now I just have to decide which columns I want to move. Actually, let's add maybe two more columns. Okay, now let's say I want column three to be moved to the very beginning. All I have to do now is add a class of order dash first, and it's going to take column three and move it to the first position. That's it. Now let's say I wanted column one to move to the last position. Again, all I have to do is say order dash last, and now column one moves to the last position. And you can see two, four, and five are unchanged. They just fit in the middle in the order that you would see them in the HTML from top to bottom. Now, if you're not familiar with Flexbox, this might be a bit challenging or a bit complicated at first, but that's okay. Just play around with it and practice it. The more you practice, the better you'll understand. And once again, if you haven't seen my last video with Bootstrap 5's grid system, it's really important that you see that one. So if you haven't, please have a look at that video. I'll post the link once again in the top right corner. Definitely check it out. It'll help you understand the whole concept of breakpoints and what the grid system is all about. Did you like today's video? If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from my viewers. It's always so nice to connect with my viewers and I wanna thank you all so much for your continued support. Now I'm gonna have lots more videos in the weeks to come, so please stay tuned for that. Until next time, keep on coding.